So this is the bedtime routine for a four month old baby girl. Welcome back to my channel. In my previous video, I talked about my daughter, Baby G, being able to sleep through the night from 14 weeks old. If I have to pick up one particular thing that contributed to her full night's sleep, I would say it is the bedtime routine that helped us the most. So today, I'd like to take you with me to join our bedtime routine in real time. Previously, I started the bedtime routine at about 7 p.m., but I found it quite late because Baby G sometimes took too long to finish her bottle and I won't be able to put her down to bed before 7.50 and if that's the case, she will only be able to fall asleep after 8 p.m. That is considered to be quite late for babies at her age. A healthy bedtime should fall somewhere in between of 7 to 8 p.m. and that will allow your baby to wake up towards 7 a.m. instead of earlier. Now you might have a question mark in your mind. Wait, really? Isn't it later bedtime resulting in a later wake up time? I wish that's true, but the reality is opposite. It is very counterintuitive. The later your little one is going to bed, the earlier she will wake up. This is because if babies are not having enough sleep, they will end up being overtired. Overtiredness leads to disturbed nights, hence shorter sleep. So if you are wondering why your little one is waking up early like 5 a.m. in the morning, maybe try to put her to bed a little bit earlier to see if that will solve the problem. So now I start the bedtime routine at about 6.45. That means, sadly, my husband won't be able to see her awake until the next morning if he doesn't work from home that day. Even though this is not ideal, we have to respect the baby's bedtime if we want to have a better night as a family so everyone can rest well and get fully recharged before the next day. Personally, I think the essence of bedtime routine is all about getting ready and sending the signals for bedtime to your babies. Therefore, I would like to keep it as quiet and have as little interruption as possible. Before we go upstairs to start the routine, I would prepare the milk bottle already and take it together with us while going upstairs. So I can just get straight into feeding after showering her. We have installed this window shutter and it can prevent 99% of the light coming in. Some people also have blackout curtains and it also works well. I think it's important to keep the room relatively dark, especially during British summer when the sun doesn't go down completely until 9pm. I like to close the shutter first thing after we come upstairs just to create that nighttime atmosphere to get her eyes used to the dark environment and prepare her mind to settle down. Then I will undress her on the changing table and take her to shower in the bathroom just next to her nursery. In my previous video, Baby Essentials, I have shared with you that I stopped bathing her on a daily basis due to the hustle and the waste of water. With the help of a baby seat, I feel showering is way much easier and quicker. It is also somehow cleaner as well because I get to wash Baby G with running water instead of dipping her into a bowl of still water. You can find the reference links of the products I use in this video in the description box below. Straight after getting out of the shower, I will wrap her immediately with a baby towel. This is to prevent her from getting too cold from the air. However, no matter how quick I am, she will cry at some point because of the cold. Remember I said I would like to keep this bedtime routine period as quiet as possible? I try, but you can never stop a baby from crying. So just relax and finish doing what you need to do. This is our changing table, which is also a jaw dresser. I kept all her changing clothes, nappies, cream, and cotton wool all in here. So I don't need to go anywhere else to grab things by leaving her alone on the table, which is never a good idea because at this age, baby G started rolling over already. Even if it's for newborn stage, I won't leave the baby unattended anywhere but floor just for the peace of mind. I don't really massage her before the bed because I find a simple routine does the job already, then why add more complexity if it's unnecessary? Having said that, I do rub her here and there while I'm applying moisturizer on her after the shower. 
Then I'll take her and sit down on the sofa to feed her. Now she's on 150 mm per meal. However, for the bedtime meal, I give her 180 just to make sure she's fully contented and hunger won't be the reason to keep her waking up during the night. Today is reasonably a good feed. She finished the bottle within 15 minutes. As babies grow older, I find burping gets easier and easier. I now just rub her back while sitting instead of patting her and walking crazily in the room. Normally, she will be burped within one or two minutes. Then I'll take her up on my shoulder and walk gently in the room while singing a lullaby in my mother tongue Chinese. I won't wait for her to fall asleep in my arm. The purpose of singing a lullaby and walking her around in the room is just to help her settle and mentally get prepared for bed. When I feel that she's calm and has digested the milk, I will then put her down on her bed, wear the sleeping bag for her while continuing seeing the lullaby, but try not to respond to either her smile or coo, because I don't want to overstimulate her again before bedtime. Now it is in May and the room temperature in the nursery is around 22 Celsius, so I dress her in a short sleep vest and a one talk sleeping bag. When baby G was just born, that was in January, I was afraid of her being too cold so I always ended up overheating her. To avoid rushes and having a grumpy baby, you should also pay attention to how much you put on your little one and I always use this reference provided by my hospital, Chelsea and Westminster, to help me decide how to dress my daughter for sleeping. After saying goodnight and kissing her, I would then leave the nursery and monitor her to fall asleep from our baby monitor. I started to let her go to bed independently when she was 14 weeks old after I read a lot of information about baby sleep training because I really don't want to rock her in my arm every night and have the fear for the whole night of her waking up crying. I thought I would be working together with her for a good week or two to establish that independent sleeping habit. However, this time luck was on my side. I didn't really end up doing the hardcore sleep training for baby G. She managed to settle and fall asleep quietly by herself from day one. She now sleeps for 11 hours at night on average. By falling asleep around 7.30, it means my husband and I can have almost 5 hours to ourselves before we go to bed around midnight. During this time, we'll cook dinner for ourselves, also prepare two portions of food for the next day's lunch to save time for cooking during the day. After finishing the dinner and cleaning up the kitchen, we would either catch up with some work in our own offices or choose to watch something to spend time together. Recently, I realized I took it for granted for knowing all the development milestones of our daughter and I expected my husband to do the same, ignoring the fact that he wouldn't know unless I show him because he is at work. So now, we also spend 10 to 15 minutes every day looking at baby J's photo and video I took during the day before we go to bed. This is definitely one of the best activities for both of us. So this is the bedtime routine for our 4 month old baby girl. I hope you feel connected and confident by watching my real life experience with baby sleeping management. Thanks so much for staying with me. If you like my video, please don't forget to give me a thumb up, subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell to not miss any of my future sharing. I upload video every Friday at 7pm so I'll see you guys next week. Have a good weekend and bye for now.